Hello and welcome to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker. Today we have two guests and two topics, a glimpse into contemporary Islamic thought and spiritual healing. We're going to discuss contemporary Muslim thinkers, Ali Unal, Fethullah Gulen from Turkey, as well as Sufi Sheikh Chefik Jan, who wrote about Rumi. And we'll be finding out about spiritual healing, what it is, how it works, and how it can bridge religion as well as medicine. Our guests today are Willem Willeke and Katja Zündermann. Welcome to Matters of Faith. Thank you. Now, both of you studied Islamic culture and um, civilization. How come you're Germans? What was the fascination? <laughs> um, I don't know. Already as a child, I was <coughs> much fascinated by Asia and the um, Middle East. So after school, I was traveling in this area for some years. And I felt very fascinated by, um, by the society, by the warmth between the people, by the hospitality. And um, I, I learned to learn Arabic there. Ah. And then I decided just to study it. I see, mm -hmm. studied seriously back in Germany. Mm -hmm. And right. you? Yeah, for <coughs> me it was uh, quite similar. <coughs> also after school, I went to, uh, sometimes um, three times to Turkey and uh, afterwards to uh, Egypt. And as I've also been to uh, India and to Thailand. I was always um, interested in, um, in cultures, in uh, foreign cultures. And uh, I was um, impressed by this um, Islamic, uh, Islamic uh, civilization. And so uh, I wanted to study something which, uh, which, which was connected with uh, language and I decided then to um, study uh, Islamic sciences because there you learn um, the, the Arabic language. Now, uh, Willem Wildeke, <coughs> you are actually a translator of books, yeah? yeah. How did you begin with translation? Uh, for <coughs> me, it was a long way to uh, translating because I didn't go the um, regular way. That means um <coughs> I didn't study um, translation at university, but I, uh, I studied um, Islamic sciences and history and sociology. There are insights of the study. We also had to uh, translate text, but uh, it was not on that uh, high level, maybe. And uh, after the study, I, d I decided to go uh, two years to Syria uh, to learn the Arabic there, be much better than it's possible in Germany, of course. Yes. And um, <coughs> so uh, after my return to Germany, after two years, um, I became a freelance uh, translator. I translated for, uh, with a f uh, together with a friend for some agencies and all kinds of texts, um, economical, um, Judical or uh, also manuals and uh, for ins um, reports for insurances and um, yeah so I became a translator and uh, since uh, 1999 I work for the Enid Institute which is a Turk-run institute and uh, that engages in intercultural and inter uh, interreligious uh, dialogue and since um, three years I'm um, at the Fountain Publishing House and translate books there. And what are the challenges about translating? Yeah, before, I, um, <coughs> when I was, was a translator, I translated um, only these texts, and uh, there it was very, um, the most important thing of all was um, to translate uh, literally. That means um, word by word. And uh, you didn't have even, you didn't even have to understand what the text means, and some terms mean. Um, the, the most important thing was that the words are tr um, transferred into a German uh, really literally. But now I'm, um <coughs> I'm translating books on uh, culture and uh, religion since uh, now 10 years. And there uh, it's um, another thing. There, uh, I think so in my eyes, the uh, uh, most important thing is to catch up with the spirit yeah. of those books. And so you have to penetrate the meaning to transport this meaning uh, to the readers. Yes. And uh, of course, that is uh, more challenging, challenging than uh, to, <coughs> uh, to translate only word by word. Because there are many, especially the Arabic language is so rich and uh, many meanings. Mm. Uh, one word may have many different translations, many different meanings. Yeah, How do you deal with that? Yeah, you must. Uh, 
you of course uh, you have to be closed uh, to the uh, to the original you have to cling to the uh, to the original but um, yeah you have uh, you have to have an image in your mind and uh, you have to know what uh, the author will uh, wanted uh, wants to say with these words and uh, if you uh, of course it uh, demands experience mm. but um <coughs> if you have this then you can uh, then it's much easier for you to um, tell it, to, uh, to transport this meaning uh, to the readers. In Does it in also language. involve res research about the author <coughs> um, so that you understand what he could possibly mean? I mean, if you know nothing about the author, how can you know what he wanted to say? Uh, you know, if you do some research, yeah. do you do that? Do you do research a little bit about the author, um, trying to understand his perspective? Yeah, the, the, I think the most of the um, books I translated are from maybe three or four persons, and um, <coughs> I know uh, their, uh, their thoughts. I didn't know them in the beginning, but I didn't do research then. Maybe I should have too, but um, now they are quite uh, familiar to me, and so I, ex uh, um, I know what they think and uh, how they th think. I guess. <laughs> so, and which so are <coughs> which are those authors? Uh, it's uh, Fetullah Gülen. Uh, you have a book there? I have a book <coughs> of him here. Okay. So um, the most uh, books I translated are to him. I and see. Um, I also uh, translated um, to um, Ali Una in this uh, Quran commentary. It's very new. Right. It's a very new edition. <coughs> it comes out uh, just now in Germany. And um, they are just uh, two. And uh, this, um, there's another author, Shefik Jan, who is a head of a... Um, of a Sufi order in Turkey, and I translated a book um, to him too. So, um, yeah, it's, I've, I think for me it's uh, more important um, to concentrate on the, uh, the thoughts and not on the persons uh, themselves. So mm. let's go through those books that you have brought uh, with you. Mm. The Quran, for example. What is unique about uh, this particular version of the Quran, the, this translation? Yeah, this translation, uh, this, um, this translation is to uh, Ali Unal. And um, <coughs> it's a very new commentary, a, a modern one, uh, you can say. And um, if you just read a few pages of it, uh, you, will all, uh, you will feel at once that the author is a, um, is, is a great expert on uh, tafsir and um, tawil. Uh, that means um, commentary, uh, Quran commentary and interpretation. And um, <coughs> I think the author is uh, quite uh, conscious of the fact that, um, uh, that it's difficult to understand the Quran if you have only a plain, um, literally, um, translation. If uh, he uh, um, translates this um, word by word only, then uh, the people uh, will rather get uh, quite confused. So um, he puts in, uh, inside the text some um, uh, complementary and explaining um, commentaries, which are in a special marked by slots. And the brackets, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, then under the text, uh, inside the text, there are also footnotes, and they are, um, they provi um, provide uh, further explanations down the text. And this is, uh, this is uh, really a huge uh, material with, uh, which is uh, cited by him there. And I think um, the readers, um, it doesn't matter whether they are experts, experts of the Quran or they are uh, new interested le uh, readers, um, they all will uh, benefit. And it's a, a clear structure also. You have uh, some um, even further uh, information in the back where uh, there are some annexes. I think it's uh, 14 annexes and um, a list of the beautiful names of God and um, subject index and uh, name index, so it's clear structured. All right, and what about uh, Rumi? You also translated a book on Rumi by yeah. this famous Mevlevi Sheikh. Yeah. What did you learn from that? Did, it, did you learn something from it for yourself? Yeah, Rumi uh, in is what you can tell uh, um, even 600 years um, after his death, an uh, international superstar. I think there's no other uh, author of poems who sells uh, more books uh, in the US than uh, Rumi yeah. now. And um, if you read this book of uh, Shefik Jan, then um, you, have you get an idea 
why this is so. So um, <coughs> yeah, uh, he's a, he was uh, for many years, he's uh, recently died at the age of, I think, 95. And uh, before, so for so many years, he was uh, um, the head of a very uh, famous um, Sufi order. Yeah, the Mev Levies. Mm. Yeah. The ones mm. that do the whirling. Yeah. Yeah. The whirling dervishes. Yes. He, um, he has very, very uh, special insights and he offers them to uh, his readers. If um, you read his, books, uh, his, his book on Rumi, then you are uh, taken back uh, in time to the 13th century. And uh, it's not only about Rumi, you learn uh, the history and uh, the political situation even and the spiritual uh, currencies. And Rumi is uh, presented from um, different perspectives. Has anything um, influenced you, yourself, um, yeah, in this book? Yeah, I think so, because um, I didn't know um, how open-minded these uh, spiritual orders uh, can be. I thought, uh, always thought they are some um, they are little islands and they uh, put uh, walls around themselves and uh, they are, I didn't think that they, they are so open. And um, Rumi, um, as he appears in, in his book, was really very much enrooted. The simple people? Amongst uh, the yeah. simple people? He was a very uh, known, renowned um, scholar, even in his uh, time, but uh, he was very much enrooted in the, simple, um, in the uh, atmosphere of the simple people and he was a very modest uh, man, so um, I liked his character yeah. uh, very much. And uh, Shefik Jan always cites uh, poems, um <coughs> cites very many poems of him and um, many stories uh, of his life and yeah. Wonderful. Do you read this kind of uh, work when your husband translates something on Sufism? Uh, have you read it and what is your... Yes, I did, but I read um, Rumi um, a long time before. <laughs> um, um, I think um, the, when I got to know Rumi, it was in Japan. I was traveling in Asia and I met uh, um, a German Zen Buddhist mm -hmm. and he showed me books of Rumi. <laughs> so um, <coughs> when I read them, I was very fascinated and I think it was one um, step on my way to to the Islamic culture. And um, so he has a um, um, special meaning for me. And I, I love, love him, um, I like him very much. Yes, mm. yes, I can imagine. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to reading your book, uh, the one on Rumi. But what about the other one? Um, there's this other wonderful thinker, uh, Fethullah Gulen. Um, and he has uh, a special take on Islamic thought, reviving mm. education and sciences uh, in order to get somewhere, I suppose, mm. in life. What do you make of his thought? And can you elaborate a little bit for us, please? Yeah. Um, <coughs> um, Fethullah Gulen is uh, very uh, famous in uh, the um, Islamic world, and especially, of course, in Turkey, his um, home country. He is a very uh, integrative. Uh, person, mm -hmm. and um, he, uh, he he doesn't exclude uh, anybody. He says every um, everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a, Mus uh, a Muslim. We um, should um, we should shake hands and we should um, learn to know each other and we should uh, learn from each other. Yeah. And. Um, also in Germany, the, um, the people always think that Islam is very uh, backward, but um, Gulen also accepts uh, modernity, and um, he's a mo modern thinker, you can tell, and um, he's a strong ac advocate of uh, freedom, also of uh, personal freedom. Um, see, um, what I th uh, think is important about him also that he uh, emphasizes uh, very much the personal um, responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you, is it, is it, uh, it is you who, uh, who has his uh, life in his own hands and you, can, uh, you should make the best of it. Mm. You, should, um, edu uh, you should get education and knowledge um, wherever you can um, gather it from. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think that is a very good uh, message also uh, in the dialogue between the uh, cultures.
He also says, uh, promotes dialogue, does he, between the cultures? Yeah, he uh, promotes um, dialogues, um, inter intercultural and uh, interreligious uh, dialogue. And um, he, um, he says that he, also em uh, he always emphasizes togetherness, mm -hmm. togetherness and unity instead of uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. He says that uh, the people must uh, talk to each other and uh, as I told, uh, already told, uh, but they must learn from each other, and uh, so then um, the conflicts will disappear. And he sa also said there mustn't be a um, clash of civilization if we don't want it to, uh, if we don't want to have it too. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And he, of course, he goes, uh, his, his source, I suppose, is the Quran. I mean, the yeah, Quran already says uh, you are responsible for your own actions. And yeah, of course. the Prophet said, uh, you mm. know, you have to search for knowledge, even if you have to go to China. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's true. I suppose he's deeply rooted in the sources of Islam, but mm. um, sort of digests them for the modern world. Um, yeah, he delivers uh, the message, the old message. Well, thank you very much, and uh, mm. we shall uh, take a small little break now, and after the break, we'll be back with Spiritual Healing, where Katja Zündemann will explain to us how it works, who does it, <laughs> and, <laughs> and a lot more about it. See you then. <laughs>